Hey there, folks. Welcome to the Stu's Game Reviews live stream. Welcome to the Stu's Game Reviews live stream. Oh, wait, that's not right. Why is it echoing? That's not right. Why is it echoing? That's not right. <laughs> Hang on a second. Coming from their computer, I think. Hold on a sec. All right, that was weird. <laughs> that was very weird. All right, well, anyway, um, welcome to the Excuse Me Reviews live stream. Hopefully, this time without echo. Um, I almost always do a stream. When I do a stream, I do, like, one game. And the reason for that is because there's a bunch of reasons. One is I want to have, like, a, th a title and a, and a thumbnail or whatever else that actually accurately represents what I'm going to play. And the other reason is that, you know, loading up a new game with these old games is not is not trivial. And it doesn't work half the time. And so I used to spend a lot of time beforehand just getting the game to work before I could actually stream it. But today I decided, you know what, the hell with it. I'm going to do what I want to do, and maybe I'll play a bunch of games, maybe I'll play one, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, to start with, I have this game here called Robbers of the Lost Tomb. And this is a game for the Commodore 64. It sort of looks on the back like it's an interesting game. Um, I read the instructions, though, and I think it's like some kind of Hunt the Wumpus enhanced version or something. And maybe you'll see what I mean when I actually get to play it. It says here, it's a double pack with disc and cassette versions included. Um, I have the disc over here. I'm going to try to load this game, but I haven't actually... I don't know if the disc works. We'll, we'll find out. So this is why... This is an experimental stream. If you like this, you know, great. What you see right now in the in the uh, the window here is the Cryoflux interface. But I can actually load this disk up. So what I have here is a disk drive. I'm going to probably do a video, rec uh, not recently, soon, which is like an update to my video of how to play old games or whatever. Um, yeah, this ain't Mr. Makers on the N64. He always asleep. I'll probably do an update to that video at some point, but I'm, this is going to be a live thing. So I got this disk drive. Now, i got to connect the disk drive to my computer. So I have a, an ID floppy cable. Um, the way these things work, if you've ever had like a, a computer in the past that used these, like this end goes to your floppy drive controller, and this other end goes. Sorry, I'm not, the camera is a little bit of a weird place. The other end goes to floppy drive. So there's two connectors for two different drives. I mean, it looks like there's four, but you can only use either one of one of either one of the. You can only use one of, one of these, not two, the ones I'm pointing to here. And you can only use one of these, not two. So you can connect two drives to this cable. One of these connectors is for a three and a half inch drive. That's this one. Um, and the other one is for a five and a quarter inch drive. And this is twist in the cable for the second drive. I'm not sure why that, why that is, but you know this the, first, the primary drive is this one. If you want to attach a secondary drive, it's over here. And then again, this one goes to the controller. So to attach a five and a quarter inch drive, you want to use this this the thing right at the end. It has a little notch in it, so you can only attach it one way, which makes it life a little easier. So um, here's the drive. Here's here's the back of the drive, and you see it has like a connector there to attach it to. I'm showing you right in the middle there. It has a notch on the connector also, so you can only attach this thing the one way, basically like this. I'll see I see if I can aim it in a way that you can actually see. Here's the connector. Well, it doesn't really help, does it? Uh, here's the connector. There's the notch. So I'm going to connect this, this end to there, that end there. Uh, like that. So now it's connected. Now this other end should go to the floppy drive controller, which in this case is a cryoflux. So here's my cryoflux in a static bag. This is what it looks like. Um, there's a bunch of different connectors on here, but the main one is this one. This is where the drive goes to. And um, it, it 
actually doesn't say pin one on it. It should say pin one and let you know which way to connect it. But luckily, it's I know how to connect it because there's a little notch also there on the top, like right here, uh, not that, right there where my finger is. There's a little notch on the front, like a little hole there. There's a gap in that little solid line. And the connector itself also has a little notch here. So the notch goes into the notch, basically, and it fits like that. And then the other end here, there's a USB thingy. So I take a USB cable, plug it into the thingy, very technical term. And on the other end, I can plug this into my computer, which I'll do. Plug it in there. All right. Uh, yeah. I don't want to hold this in my lap, so I gotta make, make sure it's like in a decent spot. It's not gonna interfere with what I'm doing here. But this cable's too long, probably. There, I looped it around the back there. Okay, now I'm missing one thing, which is power to the drive. So I have this Molex connector, which goes to the drive power. It's plugged into the wall. It has a power supply attached to it. It also goes to the back of the drive. Basically, right where, right that that character right there, right next to where the other thing is plugged in. So I'm gonna plug this in here, and now this drive is ready to go. Now the only other thing, only thing I have to do, aside from knocking over my light, ah damn it, the only thing I have to do, aside from knocking over my light. Okay. is putting the disc in so here's the disc I'm putting in the drive Actually, let me fix that okay now I'm going to use the CrowdFlux program to try to read the disc so what I did right now is I did um, DTC which is the name of the program dash H which gives you like basically the help and it tells you all the different um, formats, image types that it supports. So it's what you gotta do is you gotta say DTC dash DD1, which says that this is a high density drive, I believe that's what that does, dash K2, and that says that it's it's a I think a low density disk, but I'm not I can't remember anymore. I just know that this is what you have to do. And then you say dash F, the name of the disk. So here we'll call it uh, robbers. And then dash I0. Now I0 is um, CrowdFlux stream files. So you want that. And then you do this again in the same command line. DD1 dash K2 dash F robbers dot G64, which is a name of a file type that for the Commodore 64, which preserves all copy protection and that's image type 22 if you see on there um, the list here CBM GCR image so basically the reason why I have both is because um, I don't really need both the truth is I could just do for this one without the I0 and just make an I20, I22 but um, this way it preserves the files if you need it for something else it preserves the raw stream so what it's going to do is it's going to create the raw stream and it's going to also create a G64 file that I, robbers.g64, that I can use in an emulator. Um, now, I don't know if it's going to work. This could be bad. It'll, it's smart enough when it reads it off to, to check and know and see, based on the, the image type, the fact that it's a Commodore disk, if there's bad sectors or anything like that. So if it finds a bad sector, it'll try again. But it's possible that there's a bad sector and it's not a bad disk. It could be an intentional bad sector or a hard-to-read sector or something due to copy protection. So it tries a bunch of times, but if it can't get it, you know, it just read what it, what it can get. So let's see if this, if this works, if I can go ahead and do this. All right, so far, so good. So it found it track one, track two, track three. Everything's okay so far, so that's, that's a good sign. 
When you're doing this, you should have to listen to make sure... <laughs> hey, Anatoly. G64, you know, it's G69. Very funny. <laughs> I don't think they had a Commodore 69. When you're doing this, you got to sort of listen to make sure the drive is operating, like, normally. Because sometimes you get bad things happen. If you get a bad disc, it might actually, like, mess up your drive. And then you, you start hearing, like, really loud screeching noises. If you hear loud screeching noises, you got to freaking, like, pull the disc out, like, right away. It doesn't work because that means that usually it's wearing... Um, iron oxide off of the disk drive onto your onto your floppy drive head, and then that's basically making your floppy drive head dirty. First, it's ruining the disk, but it's also making your floppy drive head dirty, so that next disk you put in will also get ruined. And then you have to, so you really have to clean the drive if that happens. Usually, you can tell if the disk is going to be bad by looking at it or if it's going to be suspicious. This disk looked totally fine, and thankfully, so far it's behaving totally fine. But you never know. <laughs> Uh, Anatoly Dasa Sal just says, <laughs> quoting me, if you hear loud screeching noises, <laughs> pull it out. <laughs> um, loud screeching noises as opposed to like loud moans, mo moaning noises are okay, but yeah, screeching noises, you probably should pull it out if that, that happens. That's funny though. <laughs> so yeah, um, I don't usually, I've never done this live on a stream before, I don't think, uh, but you know, it's the first time for everything. So it's, it's, it's it doesn't take that long, really. Hey there, Dunkination UA. How's it going? Like the hand there. Five fingers. So, so far, so good. I'm not sure why it skipped, skipped from track 35 to track 70. But that's okay. Hope, please don't hope for screeching noises because that means that I'm going to have a lot of extra work to do and I don't want to do it. Basically, it's done at this point. It's just it's just continuing to read the rest of the disc, but you see it's unformatted, so those tracks are not really important. Oh, where's that? I didn't like that last sound, but I think it was just that it hit... I think the head just hit the end or something. That was a weird sound at the end. All right. So theoretically, it worked. So let me start up um, the Vice emulator. Now, there's a special version of Vice that... Okay, let me just... I've said this before, I think, but Cryoflux works the best with Commodore and Amiga discs. That's where their bread and butter is. They really understand Commodore really well. It works with Commodore, um, like, you know, out of the box, basically. Yeah, it, and it is... This is a very intense process, honestly. Um, so for Commodore discs, it creates these files automatically, the G64... And then um, it also has a special version of the Vice emulator that was modified by these guys, the Software Protection Society, to take these 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 images and, and handle all the copy protection. Basically, I'm going to run this thing now. Uh, let me just change the the view here so you guys can see it. Okay, can I make that any bigger? So glad everyone at Cryoflux. I'm a grease weasel man. Yeah, that's what they tell me. You're a grease weasel man. Alright, well, I don't know why I can't, like... I think I have to, like, expand this a little bit, but... Oh, that's fine for now. I don't care. This is, this is a random stream, so you guys can live with a little... Whatever. Alright, so let me... Let's, let's put the disc in. Uh, file, attach disk image, drive 8. You can't see the menu, but... Oh, there you can see the, you can see sort of the menu. Um, what are they called? Robbers? I don't know why it does that. Robbers. All right. Let me see what the, um, the manual says about how to load the thing. It's probably load dollar sign, comma 8, comma 1, but since I have a manual, I might as well use it. Robbers of the Lost Tomb. It says, load robbers, comma, eight. I don't want to go to jail, because in jail they have robbers and rapists, and rapists who rape robbers. Who is that from? So one thing I like about this emulator is on the bottom it'll tell you what it's doing. It's on, it's on device eight, which is the disk drive, and it's looking at track 15. And you should be able to hear, theoretically, noise, too. Um, I gotta put my headphones on so I can hear it. 
If there's any noise to hear, like any drive noise, but I don't hear anything right now. All right. Uh, so it went to track 14. It found at least the file. So let's run. Let's run it in the right window. There we go. Interesting. I guess robbers is just a thing that loads some other file. Searching for R slash T1. Do you guys hear the noise? Or, I I'm not sure it's coming through. I hear it. Do you guys hear it? You can see it changed the track tree to track 12 now. There, you heard the little, or that you heard at least. Come on, you can do it. The other option would be the tape, which should take at least 15 minutes to load. Because that's how cassette tapes work. So that's where we do the disc. This is a really good um, nostalgic experience back in the day waiting for this stuff to run. Oh, the back of the day, nobody ever had any legitimate discs. The, you know, it's something that said, like, cracked by, like, you know, somebody or other. Cracked by DOS Nostalgia. Well, that wouldn't happen for a Commodore game, obviously. You're telling me I'm a Spectrum guy. Tape loading is my life. I think roll with tapes, but if I have an option to use a disc, might as well use it. So I, basically, you saw what happened. I got, I'm loading the fake disc now. The real disc is, I mean, I can take it out of the drive. The real disc is here. I cop, I made an image of the real disc, and now I'm, I'm, I'm loading, the emulator is loading off the image, and it thinks I'm running off a real disc, essentially. Here she was thonged. So I'm terrible at old PCs. Well, you, you can, this way you can learn. Here we go. Robbers of the Lost Tomb. Copy 1983 Timeworks Inc. Do you wish to have a save game? No. Enter tube difficulty. Uh, well, it worked. That's a good thing. That's always a... That's. <laughs> I always have a moment of happiness just with the fact that it actually worked. Uh, okay, so skill level, I guess, one is, is the easiest. Let's start with that one. Moving mummies. I don't know. Let's say no for now. <coughs> yeah, that's how long it took to load a disc. That's like the Dayedu song. <laughs> They're from something else, too. Where'd the dude go? Did you ever see the AVGN video on Commodore 64? DOS Nostalgia? <laughs> so, like I said, this is like uh, Hunt, the, Hunt the Wumpus, I think. I agree, it did suck. This is like Hunt the Wumpus, I think. Because, like, since I feel a draft... That means a pit. Also, ghost nearby. <coughs> so you're supposed to, like, um, find four sacred tablets. Can I move this guy around? How do I move him? Forward is... Okay. Use the fog keys to be the professor. Forward is backspace. Back is one. Right is two. Left is control. And fire is space bar. Or I could use the, the a joystick. It's cute. I'll give it that. Maybe I should use the joystick. Oh, let's see. I'll use... Um, I want to go back. Let's. I don't know which way I want to go. I, could, I might just die right away. You should make a map, theoretically. All right, let's see if I can go back. One. <laughs> That's how it works? What kind of crap is this? All right, hold on. I'm going to put on a joystick. Oh. <sighs>
I gotta unplug. I only have two USB ports in this computer. So I had to unplug the Cryoflux, but that's okay. Options. It doesn't, it doesn't, it didn't see it. Come on. No, I don't want to do that. Why does it keep on showing the stuff in that window? Let me turn that off. It's annoying. Uh, settings, USB, game controllers, okay. Alright, so it's, it's there, but I might actually have to restart this emulator to get to see the joystick. Let me see. Let me change. I'll, let me tell you the joystick. Let me just use the keyboard. I'll use the, the. I'll simulate the joystick with the keyboard. Let's use key set A. Okay, that should work. I don't need the joystick. This is how we do in New Jersey. <laughs> Alright, that should work. Let's try that. It's so weird. It plays the music when he walks around. Does anybody know what tune that is? <laughs> like Dig Dug. Hey, Pal Buck. Oh, you're right. Dig Dug also makes music when he walks, isn't it? Let's go to 15. Ah! What the heck? Oh my god! <laughs> I hear a snake ghost nearby. So you gotta make a map, basically, I think. Because, like, the old rooms are numbered. I think 15 is where the ghost was, right? And 5 is where a snake is. So, 11, there's a draft, so means there's a pit, either in water or 19. It's probably in 1, because I just came from 19. Surprising color, the sprite screen actually looks like a human. Yeah, I don't know why they did that. Ah! Ah! Go away! Go away! I don't think I have any... Do I have any bullets? Oh, I do. I have a... <laughs> I have a knife. I should have thrown that at the snake. And now I'm on level 2 and all the rooms are reset, I guess. This is a pro... A pro... A project game? What do you mean? Oh, another knife. Can I pick it up? I want to take the knife into the floor. Pick them up, it says. I mean... Oop, I didn't mean to do that. It's gone now. Damn it. Oh, procedure generate. It might be. I don't know. I feel a draft. I smell a mummy. It's probably this too. I don't want to go that way. This is an elevator, a ladder, or something. That's confusing to me. I think I died. Oh, I'm not dead. I just fell into a hole. I survived that fall somehow. You 
Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Is it is it procedure generated? Does, it doesn't say, does it? This tomb has five levels of 20 rooms per level. The objective is to go to the tomb, search out the tablets, and escape safely by returning to the room you entered through on level one. While in the tomb, you will be confronted with many perils, worse which are mummies. If you want to remove the mummy, he may capture you. There is no escape. You will be given a number of magic knives to protect yourself. Other perils you can find with include pits, bottomless pits, snakes, and ghosts. The perils will be spread out evenly between levels, i.e. if there are ten pits total, there should be two per level. You'll be warm when you're one, pit away, when you're one room away from any of these perils. Mummy says if you enter with a mummy, it can be fatal. If you, avoid him, throw, if you avoid him, throw a knife at him immediately. You'll not miss the second time. Snakes, you must throw a knife at it, it'll get you. Ghosts, you enter with ghosts, you're captured in the room, the room may not be safe. And then it says bottomless pits is only at level 5. Falling into one of these is fatal. You you lose. It's a, it's a blue ruby you can find that kills mummies also. Alright, so we gotta make sure not to fall any bottomless pits. I mean to do that. 11. I'm not sure. Maybe the whole thing is random. I hear a snake. Yeah, I killed that bastard. Ah, I'm dead. You're dead. I don't know where to go. Shit, there's like... <laughs> there was a mummy and a snake! And I pressed the button just threw a knife, but it didn't work. Maybe I was out of knives. And that was the room I started in, wasn't it? The movie got you. Try again. <sighs> Same tomb? No, I don't care. Let me a different tomb. And that was difficulty one, by the way. And I said moving mummies, no. That should be the easiest th version there is. Let's try this again. Oh, I see what you're saying. Because it says same tube. It must be procedurally generated. Yeah, you're right. So pits are actually good in the, in the beginning. I think it's dropping to the next level. But I don't know if everything you need to find is level 5 or what. Well, I, I, know, I wasn't able to move. It just took me to do whatever I wanted. Feel a draft. <laughs> it's like Castle Wolfenstein. That's also procedure Jerry. I didn't even know that. I feel a draft. <laughs> I'm having like interesting luck with these pits. Now I, don't, now I just hear a snake and smell a mummy. Oh, shoot! The tablet was in there that I needed. Let's see if I can throw the snake at him. I pressed the button! I pressed the button! What does it do? Throw a knife at him immediately. What? Maybe you can't kill them with the knife? I don't. Did, I pressed the button to throw the knife. How many knives do I have? I gotta start this again and see how this works. What do you guys think of this game? What does he do that for? Is like looking around? Okay, let's see what here.
I had ten knives, looks like. They're all gone now. But when the mummy was there, it didn't let me do shit with the knives. I was pressing the button, it wasn't working. Can I leave? No, let me leave. Let's restart the game. I want to restart the game. I have to die, I guess. Okay, good ear snake. Wait, let's find the snake. I just, what, is, what kind of snake is that? It turns you into like a pile of ash. <laughs> Single use food core dies. Yeah, maybe. How come there's no sound just now? Um, like, I'm dead. Look at this. I feel a draft. I hear a snake. Ghost nearby. I smell a mummy. Hope I get the, the, the draft. Alright, good. Draft is a pit. Oh, perfect. I haven't found one useful object yet, except for except for the um, the uh, the knife that I wasn't able to pick up. How many long ago did I see my movie games entries where they are previously? I don't remember, honestly. I hear a snake. I could have thrown the knife at that guy, I guess. The bubbies I'm not not trying with. I'm just getting the hell out of there. Why could I pull the snake out of his body? The, the knife would be out of his body. I'm trying to find anything useful in these rooms. I mean, it, I mean, it was over a year, I guess, you know, for for a while, but then it got better. I don't know. I'm not sure. It, take, it depends what it is. Some, sometimes I submit something that takes them forever. And sometimes if they, if I submit art, they usually you view it right away. I don't even know where I've been. It's like a really weird maze. I guess I was there. Oh, good. New games. Yeah, the new games takes forever. Hero Heart Boulder Dash? What's that? <laughs> the snake right here. Okay, he's dead. Alright, I'm gonna use save states here. Let's see if I can save the game. I shouldn't go that way, right? Let's try to go a different way. I hear a snake. Alright, snakes I can handle. It might be the snake from the rose already in, too. It's so confusing the way you come out one room into the other. And that's the rose here, right? 
I submitted it? What was it? I don't remember. Refresh my memory. Hero Heart Boulder Dash thing? Where's the go here? Smell of mummy, that's not good. It's probably at 15 also. I, I might have to go through that room to get to where I have to go. So 15 is where the mummy was. So let's go back to this way. I don't think I was the right from here. 90 share of Boulder Ash clone, but they share the register different names. Honestly, I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry. I got a lot of games here, you know. <laughs> it must have been a long time, yeah. Was it a game that was um, that was published by Softdisk? Because that the thing is, I'm always talking about. No, it was like a yellow box or something. Who the hell wants to go here? Oh, what's this? No, no, I want to throw that away. I'll pick that up. I got it. That's the blue, that's the blue jewel, I guess. The blue ruby. That kills mummies. Alright, now we're talking. Now I should be able to kill some mummies. Oh no, shit! Shit! Oh, I'm so stupid! Oh my god, I'm so stupid. Let's see if I can load the snapshot. I knew that was going to happen too. Is this, where, is this where that was? That draft? 19? No, it's 14. Alright, take this thing. I got it, okay. Should I leave now? It's a freaking maze. It's hard to like figure where you're going. There was a mummy in here somewhere. Let's just return to you one to the other. I'm trying to throw a. <laughs> I mean, was I out of was I out of uh, knives? That time it worked. Where's the mummy? There was a mummy here. Where's the freaking mummy? God damn it. Okay, I smell the mummy. Yeah, there you go. You got it with the ruby. Man, this is complicated. Can I like, piss on him now? Hey, hold on a second. Hero heart. Hold on a second.
This is what I'm talking about. Is that what you're talking about? Why are you thinking about I'll sing you a song? Okay. Yeah, so this is a boxy. It's not it's I, I not by softest, but uh GT Interactive, that's what I was thinking about. I how long ago did I put this up? I don't know, God knows how long ago. Who the hell knows? Let's see right here. See a manual. I don't I don't I don't know if I ever tried this even. I don't think I did. I just found it and I was like, this is the thing, I don't know what it is. Let me purchase it. But I could play it if you want. But this is like a, a random bullshit stream. I don't have to play this game the whole time. Where did I just come from? I want to see if I can like beat this one time. This is going to kill me, I'm sure. Oh, it didn't. So 17 is, 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 is a death trap. 17 and 14 are pits. You're really going to map this thing out. Oh, okay, got it, got it, Anatoly. Yeah, I, I can't keep track of all this stuff. Is the Shiro version any good? So that was sort of stupid. I mean, I still have to go back up now, but... No harm, no foul, I suppose. It's a waste of time. It's the same game. I mean, is there no, like, difference in terms of number of levels or something? find something here. <laughs> you stupid, you suck those three games. Hello. Ah, I killed the mother mummy. Ah, ah, ah. I love having this ruby thing. Or emerald, whatever the hell it is. The problem is I don't think I can beat this game until I find all the pieces of the stone tablet. And I have no idea where the hell they are. I mean, this is stupid. Like, there should be, like, some kind of radar or something. Like, how, how the hell am I supposed to find the tablets? I mean... I don't like this game. Because it's just too hard. I got the stupid jewel, great. I don't want to go this way, I want to kill their mummy. But like, I, I don't know if the tablets could be like on the fifth level, like, I, I don't know where the hell they are. All I know is I'm killing mummies, but. And why are the ghosts pick me up? Since when are ghosts solid? None of the early ghost roguelike games have any map. I mean, fine, but. I just like. Just to wander around aimlessly. In a roguelike game, usually, like, there, you didn't have to find anything either. Right? I mean, I guess the amulet of Yendor, but, like, generally, you just to go around and kill people. Oh, shoot. Ah, oh, man. 
I missed that knife and of course it's gone now. Was that just totally random that they showed up there? Have I played Toji in a row? I mean I have, but it's not like my favorite game of all time. Bring out the graph pair, make your own map. I mean that's the that's that's the way you gotta do it, I guess, pal puck, but I don't really have no desire to do that. I mean, honestly, this is why I don't play roguelikes, because I like to play a game with a fixed map and someone else has already figured it out and don't have to worry about it. And that can just look at their map and be done with it. I'm about to end this, this game. Oh, let's see, that's why I try to leave. See, I can't leave. It's like, I feel a draft. I hear a snake. Ghost nearby. I smell a mummy. I killed another... Oh, shit. I don't think I can kill them when they're so close to me. Yeah, that time I got them. Toji Roll is super accessible, real time co op rogue light. I know, but like Toji Roll, there's there's a there's like a ship piece on pretty much every level, and if it ha if on, if on the level there's a ship piece, it'll tell you on your radar if there's a ship piece or not. So if there's no ship piece, you know you just go to the next level, and if there is a ship piece, you gotta find it. If this told me something like there's a, there's a tablet piece on this level or something. That'll be one thing. But guess what? It doesn't tell me shit. That's why it's not a good game. Because I, I... Now that I... I like, I have no idea... Always I'll keep killing mummies, which is fun, but, like... Much better than having them kill me. But I don't, I don't know if I have to, like... If it's just a matter of going back and forth will do it. Like, if I just keep going like this over and over again, will a tablet appear suddenly? Maybe it will. Maybe it's completely freaking random. Or maybe I gotta go down... Or maybe it's on this level, or maybe it's not on this level. I have no way of knowing. All I is playing a musical thing one note at a time. This is a hole. And I've always had a knives too. I don't have knives to kill all the snakes that might show up here. The bottomless pit was more fun. Alright, this game, in my opinion, this game is shit. I don't know what you guys think, but I think this game is shit. What do you guys think? The only thing I like about it, like, slightly, is the music. Like, just for for a minute. <laughs> Always sleeps as I agree this game is shit. Anybody else have any other opinion? Look how he walks. Freaking, like, uh, I don't know what. And it, from the side view, too, better. At least you don't die when you fell down a, a, a hole. I mean, a pit. It's very gray, yeah. It's like gray and brown. Where's that snake? Did I kill it already? I can't get it because I'm too close. It's also stupid. How come when I walk in from the front side, like, I can't kill him? The ghost, the ghost cooked 10 miles away. I can't do anything about it. Just like, why does he walk like that? All right, that's enough of this game. This game sucks. This game sucks. Sorry that I bought it.
take because of your parents? What are you like? Uh, was, what was that? Uh, what was that? What was that thing? The Doctor Horrible. <laughs> Doctor Horrible sing along blog. That was a good. That was I like. I like Doctor Horrible. That was good. Maybe I want this game. I think I'm going to send it to uh, my Patreon supporters. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I wouldn't send them something I don't want. Yes, I would. Well, that reminds me, if you want to join my Patreon and get random garbage I don't want anymore, you can do that. Some, as they say, one man's trash, another man's treasure. And also sometimes one man's trash, another man's trash. It really just depends on your perspective. Why can't you get this thing back in here? It's barely designed. Here's a cassette tape. That's the game. Ah, it's someone paid three ninety nine for it. That's probably a fair price, I guess. Oh, all right. Well, so I do. It's midnight. You're old man. How old? You're not so freaking old. You're only as old as you feel, Anatoly. <laughs> and hey, hey, always asleep on Twitch. As laser beam sour cream. You're only as old as you feel, sir. All right, how about this? This looks like a good game, right? Presidents of the United States. Let's try this one. Why? Because why the hell not? Presidents of the U.S. by Gary A. Dacus. The band... Um, what they what they sing? They had like um, did they do that Drew Carey song, the Cleveland Rocks? Was that them? Or I'm thinking somebody else. Let's see if this disc works. You feel like you're 100 every day? You need to watch more Stu's reviews. It has a really uh, sort of um, euthanic effect on most people. So this one here... Because it is a, um, we'll call it pre Pusa. Um, because it's an Atari disc, we want to use type. 3A or 4A. Usually it's 4A. That might be 3A. Let's try 4A first. This is the wrong type because it's unformatted. So let's forget that. Let's try 3A. This is so much fun. This is like a simple game, I'm pretty sure. I like simple games sometimes. Do 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 do
How's everybody doing today? You guys like the uh, instruction in Cryoflux or just super boring? Who care? Do, 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 do. The what? What I'm doing right now, showing you how to, how to, how to I'm image the disc. Before you joined Palpuck, I showed the whole setup. All right, so unfortunately, um, Cryoflux, like I said, works really well with Commodore, but not so well with Atari 8 bit. So I use another program here. It's called A8 Raw Conv, and it converts Cryoflux stream files to ATX files. Which is what the use of the Atari emulators. Uh, oops. So, ATX, yes, that's what I want. ATX. Not to be concerned, not to be confused with APX, which is Atari Program Exchange. Play name of it. Sorry, no dot here. All right, so loaded up pisa.etx. Zero missing sectors, zero phantom sectors, zero sectors with errors. That's all good. So let me run Altera now. It's loading some other game or something. Detach disk. All file system cold reset. Okay, let me show. Let me show. Let me share this thing. All right, this is Altira. Atari emulator. Oops, no, sorry, hide this image. Alright, let's see what the instructions say for how to load this game. Someone took the staples out of it for some reason. I don't know why they did that. I'll put the staples back in. Okay, try your disk drive. Put the disk in. Close the door. Oh, insert the Atari Basic Language cartridge. That's important. So let's insert the Atari Basic Language cartridge. Attach special cartridge. Basic. Let's restart the emulator. Now we're running Atari Basic. Now let's put the disk in. Uh, attach disk. Try one. PUSA.ETX. Now we're going to run DPRES. Like this. Well, that didn't work. Uh, what did what I do wrong? Error 130. Hold on. I 
I've never had it like fail so completely miserably like that before. What am I doing wrong? See, this is what I mean by things don't work. What's error 130? So now it's working, okay. Presence of the United States. Okay then. Presence of the United States, covered in HBO by Gary E. Dacus. Oh, they're so nice. Dun, 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 I think I preempted the song a little bit. So proud to be an American. You guys, anybody who watches this anymore, you guys all just like give up on me here. I'm just kidding. Uh, all right, so let's do fill the blanks. I feel I feel lucky. Term of office: eight sixty one, eight sixty five. Or Presley, 16th, freed slaves, political power Republican. Please add the president's name. Abraham Lincoln. What are you guys writing there? What is that? What is that CA thing? Another one. 1961 to 63, Q, missile crisis. So do you want, like, full, like, is John Kennedy enough, or... Oh, I'm so good at this. Oh, this one's tough. 929 to 33. This <laughs> is propaganda. Um, who is this? Anybody know? Uh, is it Woodrow Wilson? I gotta think about this. Uh, Hoover, Papa, you should, you're pretty smart, so like I'll go with I'll go with your Hoover. Some old white dickhead. There you go, Papa. Did you look it up, or did you just know that? Eighty nine to ninety three. 23rd president is like Benjamin Harrison, William Henry Harrison, Benjamin Harrison. Being a pressure at Hooverville's. There you go. Uh, 1849 to 50, 12th president, California Gorish Whig. Uh, anybody know this? Two years, I'll tell you, but he must have been killed. Somebody knows know this. California Gold Rush. Who's the twelfth president? Uh, 
Zachary Taylor. Uh. Wow. Uh, ET's president. Civil War general. This would be Grant, right? Ninety forty five to fifty three. This Truman. Thirty-three to forty-five is uh, Roosevelt. Age sixty-three to sixty-nine. Great Society. That's Johnson, right? At least six years. Yeah, because what's his name died first. Three to sixty one, that's Eisenhower. The recent ones I know better than the old ones. Eighty one, twentieth. Uh, some guy was obviously killed or died. Anybody know? I know there's like an educational program here, but uh, I have no idea. Can't even think of anybody. Republican, American Red Cross. I should get my daughter. She knows like all the presidents. Uh, I literally have no clue. Anybody? Anybody have any clue at all? Anybody have any clue whatsoever? I feel like I should, I should, I should be able to know this, but it's not like Teddy Roosevelt. He just, just, Et one is too short. Um, I literally have no idea. James Garfield. Oh, he was. Yeah, he was assassinated. Okay. <sighs> All right, 1969 to 74. This is Nixon. Ted Theodore Logan Esquire. Hey, El Jefe. Uh, who's this? 93, 3, 29. 23, 29. 30th president, Prohibition era. Is this Woodrow Wilson? Calvin Coolidge. You guys aren't helping me either, so. Oh, this one I know. Twenty-one or twenty-three. This 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 Woodrow Wilson. Too short. It's only three years. He must have died. Is that Woodrow Wilson? Women vote. Since I don't know, I want to see Woodrow Wilson again. 
Ward Harding. Uh, all right, this is Woodrow Wilson. what they have in here because Reagan which would be 1909 to 13 President Benjamin Franklin there was a President Benjamin Franklin hey Sifa how you doing do you know the President of the United States was in 1909 this is this could be Teddy Roosevelt I think he had two terms. I don't think it is. William Taft. This is Andrew Johnson, right? Old Hickory, Andrew Jackson. Canal. This is Teddy Roosevelt. I'm pretty sure. President Jemima. Yeah, it's 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 presidential trivia. Uh, this is Reagan. Six president. I'm the king of trivia? Well, sometimes my brain is working properly. Vice President Chef Boyardee. What about Vice President Uncle Ben? Chance here, right? Uh, Artemis L. and Falk War? What's that from? I should take the multiple choice. ETE5, uh, this is Grover Cleveland, it's served twice. Eighteen forty one. This is William Harrison, the guy that died thirty days after office. This is the same one they just gave me. Oh, because they gave me for 22nd. Now they gave me again for 24th. That's weird. First electric light. Bilbo T. Baggins? Is there a T there in Bilbo T. Baggins? Bilbo, Bilbo, Bilbo Baggins, the greatest little hobbit of them all. Uh, what is this? Republicans had a good run for a while.
Paddock of 1837. Uh, uh, Well, what was this? I should know it. Tyler? I remember Tyler's first name. Thank you, El Jefe. I'm trying, I'm trying. Uh, I just don't know who this guy is. I think it's I don't remember who this is. American War. Like Tippecanoe and Tyler, too. That's the, that's the other one. Uh, 25th President. had everybody I, that I can think of. McKinley. Damn. Uh, 11th president. 1845 to 49. <laughs> Good guess. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so is that Zachary Taylor? No. He was Polk. Excuse me. Standard time adopted. Grizzly Adams. I don't know. I'm losing my mind at this point. Hey, Hopser Key. How's it going? Chester Arthur. I should have got my daughter down here. She could have probably answered all these. Fifth president. I need to go back to school and like learn this stuff again. Tenth president. Next Texas. This is the Tyler, right? But I can't. So was it John Tyler? Was it? I don't know. Oh God. 
Huh. I have 98 points. Right, I guess I'll take it. Would you like to play again? No. I'll probably never play that game ever again as long as I live, but... That was a, that was a sure a mental workout. Let's do the goat. <laughs> Not quite, but... Uh, that was at least a reasonable attempt. Let me put this away. Wow, that was a workout. Mental workout. These things came in, like, boxes, I think, but I'm not even sure, honestly. Sometimes they came in boxes, but I don't think they always did. All right, what do I want to play now? Maybe another disc game. Let's see. What do I got? Top shelf. So you tell me I'm top shelf, or I should look on the top shelf? Let's see what I got behind me here. Oh, that's messed up. Now. Did I try this? I feel like I tried this. And I did, like I don't. I didn't actually. I looked this up already, but I, I didn't actually stream it. I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. I don't think I streamed it. Let me see. Do <laughs> How are you all doing tonight? This is a completely random stream. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Fix says he still loads a counter 64. That's pretty awesome. Do you ever use it? I may try this after that. We'll see. It's Pico's Bill. Told by Robin Williams. That's the interesting part about it. It's cool how Phillips, all these CDI games that all failed and crashed and burned because no one bought a CDI, they ported like almost all of them to DOS. The only ones that aren't really are the, the Zelda ones or the Mario ones. So they probably have rights to do that. St. Lord's a Thunder of the Turbo Guy. Well, this is Repton right now. Repton. I'll read the back for you. Code Crimson, do you read me, Star and Fire Armageddon? Affirmative, Commander. Over. This is urgent. The quarriers have attract, attacked Repton. They're building a base station and draining our power supply. They're guarding Repton with everything they've got. You and your squadron are our last hope. I'm on my way, Commander. Full speed, Starfighter. Remember, you... <coughs> 
Commander! Come in! Commander! Will the Armageddon arrive in time to save Threpton, or will the evil couriers take over the galaxy? Who cares? <laughs> Alright, let's try that again. This is why you gotta read the instructions before you play these games. Do, 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 do. All right, it says load serious kind of eight. Let's try that again. See, this is why you can't play these without instructions. And to be fair, I think even on the back of the box it tells you to do it. But certainly, no, it doesn't. But the manual definitely does. Prepare to die for reptide. Ah, 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 Sorry. Had some parts replaced. Well, this is a humble emulator. Let's see, uh... I'm gonna, I mean, I think I tried to play this for a few minutes. I just died right away. So I'm sure everyone's going to die here, too. <sighs> Excuse me. Press button to fire. Release joystick and joystick button to put up shields. Press any key, then press joystick button for nuke bomb. Seems a little weird. It's a trading mode, only for the Atari. Oh, there's trading mode for Commodore, too. In the Apple version, there's no trading mode. You refuse to die for Repton? That's not acceptable, dude. You gotta die for Repton. Like, that's... It doesn't... Yeah, I know, like... It's funny, because, like, you know, if you know the famous quote of, um... Of Patton was, uh... Like, most people say that, uh... In war, you're supposed to die for your country. But that's not true. The goal of war is to get the other son of a bitch... Die for his country. <laughs> so I don't know why it's prepared to die for reptiles. We're prepared to kill some bastards for reptiles. That uh, makes more sense to me. Look how long it takes to load. Uh, uh, like my Dungeons and Dragons shirt? I like it. Yeah. Classic red box Dungeons and Dragons. There we go. Serious sense reptile. My dear Tom. That's an eye for instructions. Priority message to any survivor is the Reptile Assault Squadron. Code Crimson. I fear this comes too late. We are scattered and weak. They were swift. The north was stripped of light in scant days. The south crumbles. Our sole hope is that one of you lives. Okay. We have learned this much. The enemy center is guarded by Nova cruisers. If hit, they break into small but deadly single ships. Those things are right. They look deadly. There are nine mine layers which lay destructive devices in your path and dines that discharge deadly energy beams. Jeez. The spy, though not known to attack, is a hazard to navigation. We're flying over the base and is protected by SAM type missiles. I thought I just the same thing scrolled over again. Oh gosh, the missiles. If you in this dire situation, we release from Sirius Base the new Ar Reptile Armageddon ship. You're not so late, Stars Manning. I, this is the third game I'm playing. Welcome to the stream. Beyond normal weaponry, it carries a store of newly developed nuke bombs. The ship is also provided with the latest in shield technology. The ship also contains an energy converter. The enemy dreams, which are stealing power of the reptile grid, can be stopped if you fly through their energy. This is too, way too convoluted, by the way. And Alfie said, by the way, D&D is not what it used to be, sadly. Yeah, that's true. As I flew through the beam. You can return this power to the grid by flying through the power tube. I don't say Drain says we steal some power. The power will be used to construct the enemy surface base. 
Is this like some kind of version of um, Defender? Your main goal is to prevent the couriers from completing the surface base. Okay. The surface base is finished, or the grid is a drain of all energy. The armor can bomb will destroy all life. You have to engage the enemy in their underground stronghold. There, if you can strike the center of their main generator with enough shots, the enemy will be defeated until the next attack. <coughs> Okay. <laughs> Good luck. May the strength of reptile guide you. <laughs> just, oh my god, who cares? I, I agree. This is like really um, sort of lengthy instructions. Now there's point values. Why can't they just say spy? Why there to be an E at the end of spy? Spy. Dine. Mind layer. What about person layer? Drain missile. You'll receive an extra army gun ship and nuke bombery five thousand points. Your ship looks like a duck duck's beak or something. One to ten for nuke bomb up A down shields left right uh, Yeah These are joystick must be plugged to port two. Press the button fires, lose the button the stick activates the shields. Space bars have a nuke bomb. Okay. F1 pause and resumes game. Control K, Control J. Okay. Or F3. F5, Control R, starting game progress. <laughs> Well, like counter 60 bore. Why don't I turn the sound off? Star came from demo mode. Not right now. Let me put the, uh, plug this, the, I'm going to use the keyboard for the joystick again. But I have to put it to port 2 instead of port 1. Alright, I press the button. Let's go to training mode. I play. Gorilla, not bass. It looks nothing like this at all. What are you talking about? So if I don't touch anything, I, have this, I guess the purple's my shield. When I'm moving, when I'm, when I'm thrusting, the shields are not activated. How did I miss that? What the? What the hell? Oh, I destroyed something. Warning. What's the warning? That's all shooting, man. This game sucks. <laughs> Absolutely everything's either green or yellow. Yeah, what the, what's the deal with this? I really control the goddamn thing. Why does my ship look like so freaking stupid, also? I never understood how come Defender also, like, you can go through the floor and go through buildings right now. Why does that work? I may actually exit training mode and go to the real mode and get my ass kicked in the real mode. Uh, what do I do? I'll get ready. 
No, I don't. I want to exit train mode though. Let's lay the nuclear bomb. There's only one of those. There's radar at the bottom too. What does the warning mean? We better. We better actually warn you something specific. There's like shit all over the place. Look at the radar. My shield's broken? That's what it's warning me of. I don't get this game. I don't understand this game at all. There's millions of ships. I blew up a whole shitload of them. Do I have a limit of these nuclear bombs? Nope, apparently not. I think I'm out. I can't even hit these guys. They're too small. I can't hit these fuckers. What the hell's going on here? Or how do I exit training mode? Sucks. I want to exit. How do I exit the game? I mean, maybe if I kill myself. As soon as possible, even. But this guy's literally right on top of me. Kill me. Kill me. Let's go. Kill me. Kill me, please. Kill me. Here, you kill me. Kill me. I ran through a bullet. It's because training mode, I'm not dying? What's going on here? Uh, what's the f Okay, hold on a second. Oh, you can't be killed in training mode. To leave training mode, press the restore key at any time during play. What's the restore key? Okay. Alright. Let's play a real game now. I'm trying to die half a second now. Hold on a second, someone talking to me.
Sorry about that. Stars Maze is actually not bad. It's pixel level scrolling, which is not good for early PC game. What year is it? Uh, let's see. I think 1983. 1982, which is on the back. Copyright 1982. Where was I? How can you tell? <laughs> I suck at this. Hey, we hit this guy. What the, why does it give me a warning? Like, what does that mean? That's how I got hit. He took something for that building. I don't know what he took, but... really suck. I flew into that guy. Alright, so it's possible for me to die. But what is it warning me of? So I, don't, I don't understand this game. How can they get you diagonally and I can't? What is that thing in the ra my radar that I don't actually see? Oh, it's that. Okay. I did something. That guy, they think you're like a pier right next to me. I guess that's why it's his warning. They're materializing out of nowhere. Look, I can't hit him. I'm so bad at the aiming. I should have to kill these guys. Alert. What's the alert for? Something's happening, obviously. But what? I don't know. I don't like Defender because you, you like shit's going on and you don't know where it's going on and you gotta like by the time you get there like the whole freaking world is blown up. Oh, that guy has something. <laughs> I that, okay, that was stupid trying to fight him right near the missile launcher thing. That was a mistake. I mean, this is okay. It's like sort of an enhanced version of Defender, I guess. Oh, I can't stay with these missiles. I gotta stay away from the missiles. It's like an enhanced version of Defender, the way I see it. Oh, I said fly through, this is good. That could turn that energy by going through there. I think I, I, think I did, but. Did I ever do it? Okay. I was trying to... Ah! Okay, hit that guy. If we're scrolling hits are one billion at a time, we're scrolling big jumps on one character, but it's not smooth than that. Okay, that makes sense. I have shields, apparently, too, as long as I don't move. Am I... As long as I don't move or fire, rather. All these little guys are showing up now. I used the nuclear bomb on them. I tried to. That's the missile launchers. <sighs> hey, Ninja, how you doing? Good to see you. <sighs> Pixel Scroll was first on Khmer. Yeah, I PC couldn't handle it, is my understanding, but I guess this is a Commodore 64, so. It was built a little bit differently. Here's the missiles. Q 
Cuban Missile Crisis. I think that's one more guy, I think. This guy here. Hello. Hello. Die, you son of a bitch. Yeah, this is C64 stars, maybe. What's that? Oh, man. Shit! I keep forgetting that's where the missiles come out of. I think I have one the more ship left. It's a warning because these guys are appearing right on top of me. I'm not sure if there's alert, maybe. I'm not sure if there's a warning and alert. That's the one that splits up into four smaller ones. I don't really like this game. It's not my kind of game. What do you guys think? I think it was... It's okay, but... Uh, not really my type of game. I think I pay like ten dollars for this. It's probably what it's worth to me. Oh man, you'll get your ass back in the box. And the C sixty four is a PC, but a different kind of PC, obviously. These these box protectors. This is like a, this box is like the same size as an Atari box, so the box protector works really nicely for it. All right, what else do I want to play today? Should I try the Pecos the Picos Bill thing? You guys want to see this? It's for kitties, but it's narrated by Robin Williams, so I'm a little bit interested, curious. Is there anything else I want to do before that? Yeah, maybe I'll do this first. A couple more of these EPX games. Let me try this. This is Frogmaster. And we played the C64 version of Frogmaster on this channel once before. I didn't have the Atari version at the time, but I got it recently. So maybe I'll try that and see if it's worth anything. Atari Program Exchange is super cool. Let's put this aside. Back to the Windows terminal. Which is probably fine because. Oops. This is an Atari disc. What am I doing? It's like, it's like, it's like no problem using it, like saying it's a Commodore disc, but that's not going to work. Michael Crick. This game was is a main was a mainframe game by this guy Michael Crick, and then he converted it to Atari, and then to Commodore. This is, it was a really confusing game, but we'll, I'll try it again. I 
how you load the game. Atari Basic. And then just, it'll say it loads automatically. All right. That works for me. Um, Atari, well, it doesn't matter. These were, these Atari 8-bit games work on pretty much all the Atari 8-bit computers. So, 400 and 800 or any of the later ones. The emulator I'm running is simulating, I think, an 800, but it doesn't really make a difference. Missing sectors. Let's try something else here. Okay, that worked better. That's probably accurate. Let's put back up the Altera. Disc in. Now let's reboot it. So this is running as the Atari 800 right now. System cold reset. I don't remember if you guys remember this game at all. On the Commodore. It's like... These tadpoles, like, go... They turn into frogs, and they have to... The, the more, it's, a, it's like a football game or something. You gotta get your goal. Or something. And you can't directly control them, but you can... You can, um... Dodge them or something. You're training tadpoles to crush your opponent's goal line. The setting is a football pond. First guy to score 50 points wins. Left to themselves, the tadpoles dart around randomly, but when you reward them by pressing the, red the joystick controller bar, they learn to swim in the right direction. When rewarded, the tadpoles glow with pleasure, squeak with delight, and jump again in the same direction. Rewarding also modifies a dozen primitive brain cells that control each tadpole's behavior. Your, tab your tadpoles should be Stop making noise. Your tadpoles should be trained to avoid hungry, hungry linebacks and a rapacious goalie, or they'll be eaten alive. You can add more challenge by adding walls, which must be penetrated, and metamorphosis, where tadpoles change to jumping frogs, lay eggs, and eat opposing players. Alright, so... Control your goalie with the joystick controller. Okay, can we like play here? So they have loud. I 
It's only, it's only a two-player game. Oh no, you can change here. Playing the computer, select button. Computer versus player. Computers, okay. I need to do that. I still freaking play the noise. It doesn't matter which side I am. Probably the left side. Player versus computer. My stupid. Oh, wait, it's not working now. That was working, but <laughs> hold on. Input port one arrow keys. There we go. Now let's start over here. Let's start, I want to start over. It's not starting over. Yeah, it's, this is like a, a, it was a mainframe game originally. You suck. I don't think if they go, don't don't go between the thing and the count. I guess it does count. Shit. Where's my second guy? He disappeared. Oh, that was only five points. What's going on here? How come one of my guys turned turned orange? What does that mean? I'm confused. Very confused. Come on, how can I how can I block that guy? And his his goalie's right right in front of my guy. Meanwhile my guy they, oh they, now they're all turned yellow? What did I do wrong here? I got the instructions again. How'd they could get converted to the other team? I forgot I should read all this here. Tables of no intrinsic loyalty when you trade to play to your side. All the tables of potential players for your team average which side they start on. Okay, that's good to know. Alright, I understand now. Alright, you won. Good job, Jackass.
I started to cheer up. God damn it. This is hard. They're all going in the wrong direction. Yay! It's a hard game. And I guess you could play lots of different modes, but I'm not going to. I think that's enough for for that. That was that was interesting. You can play like with with. All right, stop that noise. You can play with like um, walls and frogs and all these different things. The basic idea is you reward the tadpoles for going in the right direction, and they hopefully do the, you know do what you want, but the computer or the other players also try to reward them to go the direction they didn't want. So essentially, it's like a game of football where um, you can essentially bribe the players <laughs> to do what you want them to do, but they, they can always take you know, a higher salary with the other team, I guess. That's Frogmaster for the Atari. Not bad. Interesting game. It's like a very deep game, I think. You probably play it for a while if you have nothing else to play, but... I do have things to play, so I'm not going to play it anymore. Um, what else? Let me try the Pico's Bill thing. I feel like you guys are getting tired, and some people are, are abandoning ship here, so let's try this Pico's Bill and see if it's any interest, anything interesting. It's Robin Williams, whatnot. It should be fun. Hey, let me take apart this disk drive, because I don't think I need it anymore. Put it. 
These static bags are not really necessary, but they can hurt either. But here it is. Have a USB DVD. Got a little sweaty playing that game. <laughs> you know it's a good game when you start to sweat. for Windows, it says PC, Mac, is it Windows, I'm not even sure, let's see, Looks like it's a DOS program. So let me put up DOS box. Actually, no, it looks like it's a Windows program. It's just quick time. It's quick time for Windows in one of the folders. We need to read me. Yeah, Windows installation instructions. Alright, let me rip DOS box anyway. Who's still with me, folks? Oh, some people are still here. He stars Manny. I think it's not D, it's E. So I try and stall. Yeah, so it requires Microsoft Windows, I figured. For a wire got tangled with the C around wire. Always asleep is still here too. Okay, good. Did they ask you for the Let's just do C Pecos. Enjoy the sound of my sultry voice, thank you. Do I need quick time for Windows? How about just all right for Oh gosh. I don't wanna I have a later version, I don't wanna I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I don't want to take any chances here. Let me close. I'm gonna close DOS box and restart it. See if we can just cancel out of that. Installed it actually. Let's 
still exist? I mean, sort of. I'm using it right now. I got travel to uh, Hang on a sec. Rabbit Ears Productions. Storybook Adventure. Hello, and welcome to the Enchanted Forest. Are you ready to go on a storybook adventure with me? Listen closely and follow the star from my magic robe. When the star is over the book and you press a button, you can see the story. When the star is over the jack-in-the-box and you press a button, you can play the games. When the star is over the hand and you press a button, you will leave the disc. You can move the star anywhere you like. So the hand was something else. If you see the story first, it will help you play the games. I was, I was about to ask you how the volume is. Let me put it up higher. I raised the volume. Let me know how it is now. Where's the star? To start the story, press a button and I will help you. Is that better? Sorry. Good, okay. I'm only here for Robin Williams, by the way. It's better be good quality Robin Williams. Genie quality Robin Williams. Aren't that many cowboys these days? Not real ones like Pecos Bill. Ooh, boy, Bill was a piece of work, boy. Ooh, he was the doggondest, gall his dad blamed his son of the prairie sod who ever rode across these great United States of America. Any cow puncher worth a lick will tell you that if it weren't for Bill, there wouldn't have been a Wild West. It just would have been plain old mundane. The audio mix is fucked up. wants to hear stories about the great mundane West? Ow, ow, who'd it do? It took a man like Pecos Bill to conquer the West. Before he came on the scene, cowboys didn't know a thing about cows. They read some books about sheep, but what's that gonna do? And let me tell you, a cowboy who doesn't know about cows is pretty lame. It's a wild thing, but we're putting our socks on over our boots here, aren't we? We're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, sliding down the hill without really knowing where the cactus are. Because to understand what Bill was about, you got to know that he was half coyote. What the hell's going on? Is this a de deficiency in the graphics? I'm very disappointed in this voice acting. I want to hear like him like, go like, Hey, Bill Pecos Bill. Out his life Not some Fink's like Western mean, accent. Only slightly different. He was the youngest of 14 brothers and sisters, and his folks lived right smack in the middle of Texas. They were your regular family of prairie settlers, except Bill's father had a powerful fear of getting hemmed in by neighbors. When Bill was only a couple of weeks old, his father decided the family was going to move. Some other family had moved in right next door, which was only 200 miles away. If it's one thing I can't stand, said Bill's father, it's being cramped by squatters. So Bill's family piled into their Conestoga the wagon and headed west. They traveled in that wagon for two weeks when quite by accident, little Bill squirted out the back. <laughs> 
since pioneers were too busy pioneering all the time, Bill's parents didn't realize he was gone until they took a head count three weeks later. By that time, they decided to chalk up the loss of their younger son to experience and didn't bother backtracking to find the little devil. Can you guys hear it, by the way, okay? So there was poor Bill, a mere babe all alone on the ridge. His parents and his brothers and his sisters were gone forever. Pecos Bill's prospects looked mighty slim. He was lower than a snake's belly in a wagon rut. Luckily, the first critter to happen upon Bill was a coyote. Like all coyotes, this one had a soft spot for youngins. So she took him. So she took him back. Just, let me fix my teeth here. Here they are. These are them store-bought ones, and they don't hang in that well. So she took him back over to the den. There, Bill grew up just like a coyote. A darn good coyote, too. This is the shittiest Robin Williams narration I've ever heard. I can't even do this shit. Black coyote. Kicking up clouds of dust faster than a jackrabbit. He was so fast he could outrun the deer when the two of them played tag. Well, that deer would look up, go, ah, and he was gone. Mostly he played fair with the other coyotes, although from time to time he did take advantage of them. Take advantage of what way? Why is he, he was naked? especially good at the sing alongs at night when all the coyotes would go up on the ridge and howl at the moon. One day, Bill was scouting down by the Pecos River, so looking weird. for his coyote buddies when he came across the strangest creature. Mind you, Bill had never seen a cowboy before because he was a coyote, and coyotes have no time for humans for fear that they might end up on the collar of some coat on a woman named Selma in New York. So Bill sidled up to the cowboy coyote style, you know, that little tap dance move they do when they make a move and then freeze, so you think that they're a large four-legged bush, and he investigated the situation. Bill had never seen anything like this Nothing sort of down this guy. before. The cowboy couldn't believe his eyes either, because as you can imagine, Bill was quite a sight for the stranger to behold. He looked down at Bill from his horse and said, Well, you're as naked as a jaybird, partner. Why in tarnation you're running around without clothes? <laughs> Did you lose him in a poker game, or are you just glad to see me? What do you mean, naked? Bill howled. I'm a coyote, and coyotes don't wear no clothes. How do you learn English? That'll be the day, said the cowboy. You're no coyote, shucks. You don't even have a tail. You're a human being. I got a tail right here Bill in the front. Bill turned his head to look down along his backside, and by Jiminy, who did do? He didn't have a tail. But Bill was not completely convinced. After all, he was happy to be a coyote. But I've got fleas, and I howl at the moon at night. Bill replied, Well, Guan, everybody knows that all Texicans got fleas and howl at the moon. Bill didn't want to believe he was no longer a coyote, but this stranger had made several valid points. The cowboy was a neighborly sort, so he gave Bill the extra set of duds he kept in his saddlebag. And as soon as Bill put on these clothes, it was like he was a natural-born cowboy. It took Bill an hour to learn how to talk. Back in those days, coyote lingo and Texican were almost the same language, you know, basically a lot of howls and bowels. He had only 50 words to learn, Bill had woke up thinking he was a coyote. How'd you know it was Robin Williams? He was a walking, talking cowboy. Naturally, he still had more than a few coyote notions left in him. It ended up being a pretty full day for Pecos Bill. This is so freaking weird. I mean, yeah, but I, 
I thought it was Bill didn't waste any time to step right out across Williams. the range to find out what it was like being it was, a cowboy. It was natural voice, Before not he got too Western far, voice. he was surprised by a 42-foot rattlesnake sunning himself on a rock. That rattler saw Bill and figured, it's lunchtime, ding, 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 ding. But old Bill, he had another idea. I needed a rope, and now I got one. And it's got a rattle attached to it, too. Oh, dig it. Oh! Yeah, I agree with you about the John Wayne. <laughs> Once he found his rope, Bill decided he needed a critter to ride. Up in the hills, he bumped into a cougar that was two tons bigger than any horse. And he knew this was his steed. Bill <laughs> jumped on that cat's back. He like him a in book the ribs and gave him again. a loud get up. That cougar didn't take too kindly to <laughs> his coyote cowboy passenger all the time yelling out, What you doing? What are you doing on my back? Pardon me? Excuse me? What are you doing on my excuse me? Excuse me, I'm a cougar. I'm not a pony. Pardon me. Pardon me, you large chump. Get off my back. Bill just smiled and grinned and said, Woo, coming out of shoot number nine. Look at me going wild now. Bill was having a good old time. Day and night, Bill rode his snarling cougar and twirled his rattlesnake rope and generally whipped it up. On the 12th day, he came across a cowboy camp. Now, Bill had worked up quite an appetite on his little ride, so he made a beeline for the campfire. He swallowed a whole kettle of pork belly and beans, then he washed it down with a pot of boiling hot coffee, and when he was done with chow, he wiped his mouth with a hunk of cactus and picked his teeth with a wagon wheel. Woo-hoo! Coyotes, unlike cowboys, are always tidy when they die. Never one for fancy introductions, Bill stood there looking at the cowboys and inquired, Who's the boss here? These cowboys, as tough and hard as they were, had never seen a buckaroo like Bill. They knew right off that they were in the company of someone slightly different. The ugliest and meanest of these cowpokes was named Sourdough. He was so nasty that all the other cowboys let him be the boss because they didn't want to look him in the eye and tell him otherwise. Now Sourdough ambled up to Pecos, and the two of them stood there face to face, <laughs> eye to eye, nose to nose. Laughing at Jim. Yeah, I don't. This is so How was the boss to you showed up? Said Saldo, sweet as honey. Pardon? That was the ding dingest display I've ever seen. I reckon you're the boss now. Well, what do you fellers do anyway? Bill asked. Well, not much, said Saldo. We eat beans. We ride around a bit, and other than that, it's pretty slow around these parts. Well, what do you do with all these cows? Said Bill. We got so many of them, we don't know what to do with them all. Sourdough replied. Well, if you boys aren't dumb as dirt, said Bill, who was always thinking, even though he was no Rhodes Scholar, let's take these cows up to Kansas. Folks up there could use them as pets. Leastways, it'll give us something to do. I this is a CDI title, Jim, that they converted just to like Windows. That easy as pie, Bill had invented the cattle drive. Bill and his men commenced to march in those cows right up to Kansas or bust. I said they need to sell the CDI. Riding his cougar mount on the cattle <laughs> drive just wasn't working out for Bill. After a while, the Longhorns, not to mention the other cowpokes, were getting mighty spooked and acting like regular nervous nails around that cat. Bill needed a new mount. And as soon as Bill spotted this one wild mustang, right, exactly. he knew he had found his perfect riding companion. That mustang had a history of being the most ornery critter in the West. The cowboys called him Widowmaker, since riding him was the last thing a feller did. That's just the kind of sweet little hoss that I want, Bill said as he rubbed his hands together. Off Bill ran after that Mustang like a coyote chasing the wind. 
This is so freaking surreal. As fast as Widowmaker Gallop, Bill still managed to overtake him. You can imagine how this surprised the unsociable Mustang. Why don't we just team up and get it over with so we can whoop it up together? Bill said to Widowmaker, as sweet as he could be. Widowmaker gave Bill a sniff. I figured that if anyone started to bite Bill's still balls, balls right, off. he couldn't be that bad. After that, the two of them were quick partners. You couldn't separate them with a crowbar. Widowmaker had died. I wonder which Rob Williams got paid for this, Jim. In his veins. What do you think? Only one five dollars, five thousand dollars, five million dollars. And that was Baco's bill. In those days, cowboys weren't too good around enough cattle. So it was up to Pecos Bill to show his cowboys how a real buckaroo worked a cattle drive. One day, Sourdough followed a stray steer to the top of a mountain and got himself stranded. Down in the flatlands, Bill got all the rope he could muster and lassoed his partner and the steer from the top of that mountain. <laughs> the other cowpunchers on the cattle drive took to the new device and it became an important cowboy tool, especially for roping a steer by the horns. And that's how cowboys started using lariats. I'm sure this is before Aladdin, though. This is from... 1991. The cattle sometimes 1991. got a mic perturbed with Pecos. For CDI. the one she was on the other hoof. One day, the biggest, most cantankerous steer decided to fix him for good. This steer, Old Blue was his name, lowered his horns, got Bill in his sights, and charged at him like he was gonna send him to heaven or get a new pair of shoes. When Bill got a load of what was happening, <coughs> he froze old Blue right in mid-stride with his eyes, gave him the old Houdini one-shot. Bingo! Snapped that cow's pretty soon the next thing now he's he probably the backwards and thinks he's a chicken, clucking around, and if that cow didn't lay an egg, I'm not who you think I am. After Bill unfroze him, Old Blue was the best steer they had on the cattle drive. Day after day, he always led the way for the rest of the cattle, pushing forward on the trail to Kansas. I don't know there was a line of three. I can't remember that. That two was your dread or your fart or whatever. It was a line of three. When the cattle drive got to the Rio Grande, Bill's life changed forever. Down the river came this independent little gal, stand up riding on the back of a 53-foot catfish. Even for Texas, that was a pretty fair-sized catfish. That was the first time Bill laid eyes on Slewfoot Sue. Too bad he doesn't have anything to do. Oh, hey. That's the prettiest girl in the world. But he was naked, world. he didn't have anything, so yeah, how much was it to do with her? He was reduced to a lovesick pup as soon as he saw Slewfoot Sue. I love you with all my heart. I want to make you my wife. Oh, really? Was it audiobook Slewfoot there against Slewfoot Sue was flattered by the proposal. The idea of spending the rest of her days with a prospect like Pecos Bill was mighty appealing. I'd be honored to be your lawful wife. Bill, explains why it sounds like it's set. And I'll meet you in Kansas when you're done. And we get married, we'll live happily ever after, said Bill. You can rush things a little bit, Bill. The two lovebirds parted ways. Sue riding her catfish down the Rio Makes Grande. Sense. And Bill headed north with the cattle drive. I bet you Robin had no clue they had heard the this. Vengeance. The trail was dusty, the sun was scorching, the days were long, the cattle smelled bad, and that was the good part. I wonder how much longer this is. It's almost over? This is really long, honestly. 
Every night when the sun went down behind the mountains, all the cowboys would gather around the campfire to whittle and play a game of cards. Canasta wasn't very big, and 21 hadn't gotten that far since most of them could only count to 10. Bill would tuck the cattle into bed. Then he'd go on the high ridge and howl at the moon. You know, that... Ibby Bell went off to howl because he was longing for Sue. Maybe he needed to be by himself for a spell. Or maybe he just missed his coyote family. But there was one thing for certain. Howling at the moon was something Bill just had to do. Grammy Award? Really? Wow. That's the other box? For five months the cattle drive pushed on until finally Bill and his cowboys were less than a day's Oop. ride from the Kansas border. It was time to celebrate. The end of the drive was near. Yeah, doggy! Bill gave the fellas the rest of the day off and they held a hootin' and he was singing and dancing. You know, turn your partner around and round. They're having a foot stomping good time when right in the middle of the do -si do the biggest cyclone ever seen in the west darkened the horizon. The twister swirling around at 500 miles an hour and sucking up everything in its path. It was heading right toward there. the cattle. Bill knew in his bones he had to do something. He threw his lurry and lassoed the cyclone by the neck. Widowmaker and Bill tried with all their might to pull it down, but this was no ordinary tornado. No siree. The cyclone snapped its head forward and Bill shot off Widowmaker. He hung on to the rope and dug his heels in. And he dug him right into the ground there trying to keep that twister under control, but there was nothing doing. No, no check, sir, waiter. Mm -mm. The cyclone stopped short and backlash Yank Bill smack into its back. All right, you big bag of wind, hollered Bill. Show me what you can do. Yeah! <laughs> Bill had the ride of his life on that twister. The two of them bucked and rolled and clawed so hard they dug out the Grand Canyon. Bill tried to knock out the cyclone by riding into a mountain, but that twister just ripped off the mountaintop and rolled on through. The cyclone spun faster and faster and faster to try and get Bill to loosen his grip. <laughs> Fat chance, amigo. All the cyclone ended up doing was fanning the lakes dry. Now that made Bill mad. Bill pulled so tight that he made that cyclone cry. Yeah! That twister bawled so hard its tears welled up and made the Great Salt Lake. And there were a group of Mormons just going, thank you, Lord, it's a miracle. They didn't know it was Bill. Nope. <laughs> Out into the Gulf of Mexico, that twister went, tail dancing across the water like a king salmon, spitting prawns all over Louisiana. <laughs> Bill gave a crank and the twister rolled on its back, crazier than a bronc on loco weed. Moving on, scraping the land flat. Folks call that spot Death Valley from then on because nothing lived there after Bill and that twister were done with it. But Bill hung on, and they went back and forth like that for ten full days yeah. until Bill finally managed to steer that twister Hey, up Ryan. toward heaven, up they went, up they went, riding through the clouds, up and up to all of a sudden it's shoot number one coming on the heavenly host. Yes, sir, it was the last supper and everybody was there. They're all hanging around till God went, whoa, boy, you're home. <laughs> what the hell's going <laughs> The true story, yeah, sure. And that was the last anybody ever heard of Bill. Now, you may think I made all this up. <laughs> and you may think I'm stretching it was a DVD? a tape a touch, yanking you a little bit, pulling your leg. Well, there's also some games, hey, Jim. The Cowboys got the cattle drives to Kansas. From then on, Cowboys always made cattle drives just the way Bill told them. Now, don't you go feeling sorry for Bill. He would have laughed at you for being so sentimental. Now, come on. After all, Bill isn't really gone. If you go to West Texas, you can still see Bill. If you try hard enough, yes, you can. Listen to the wind. <laughs> when it starts to howl like a coyote. What's the DVD? Is it like this? I guarantee that Bacos Bill and Slewfoot Sue will be there 
Ride and widow make her across the heavens, using the moon as a damn marine, jumping from cloud to cloud. Yes, sir, you don't get tail. Yes, sir. Gosh. That was something. <laughs> You're holding out with a 4K release. <laughs> You guys at like 3D IMAX. Is the DVD also just like st like stop motion like that? Like not stop motion, you know what I mean. Still images. I wish you recorded at the Howard Johnson down the block. Different fur recording. Now this, I'm not expecting too much of the games because this game is for early childhood, I mean, which is sort of, I mean, you don't really see too often a, you know, a, uh, a game that has this line on it, early childhood ages 3 plus, so the games are probably very, very simple, but we'll take a look at it. Like, can you click on Pecos Bill? Here he is naked. I very enjoy that. Did you find Pecos Bill's Wee Wee? Click on it if you can see it. Use the microscope to locate it. <laughs> no stars, man. That wasn't an intro. That was just like a, it was just like a movie or something. <laughs> You're uncomfortable. <laughs> Each one of these pictures will let you play a different game. If you put the star over a picture and press a button, the game will begin. Have fun. They all suck, by the way. Pecos Bill knew all of these animals. Which one found Bill as a baby and raised him? I know. Yes. A coyote found Baby Bill and raised him as one of her own. It seems that Pecos Bill made a pretty good coyote. Well, it was Pepsi, but it's empty right now. Having a special friend makes us feel happy. In which picture does Pecos Bill look happy? <laughs> I, that's sort of funny. Having a special friend makes us feel happy. Is that what they call it? You're right. Having Slewfoot Sue as his special friend made Bill very happy. He only knew her for like five seconds, though. Here are three of Pecos Bill's This guy is not narrated by Robin Williams. Which cowboy is on top of the mountain? Okay. That's him, all right. Now Pecos Bill can rescue him with his lariat. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, I was thinking, it's funny you joined right when they were talking about, like, the West. Which Ryan, picture shows cattle that are all stuff. the same size? Good job. You could be mighty handy sizing up cattle for Pecos Bill. All of these bulls are very much alike. But which bull is looking in a different direction? Good for you! Yeah, I'm super smart. Oh, did the clock change, Jim? You're right, it's 3 a.m. now. I, the, the, today's the clock change night? Look at these pictures carefully. I didn't realize Try that. Try to remember all of them. Just lost a freaking hour. What did they say? Now, oh. look at these pictures. Which one did you see before? This one. This guy, I couldn't figure out this guy. I was like, what the hell's he doing? Yep, you have a good memory, partner. I go to bed once I'm done playing Pecos Bill. Choose the bull that belongs in the missing piece. Which bull's fat ass goes in that spot in the middle? That's it. I'd like to see that for the back. Choose a box to see what's inside. Then choose another box to try to find its match. If you do not find a match, the boxes will close and you can try again. 
<laughs> All right. I think that was that that. Jim, did you do that? Was that you or or, or he just he left? I don't know. I, I feel like Jim somehow caused this to happen. <laughs> you know what? That was that was meant to happen. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Jim exits stage left. Did you do this, Jim? Somehow you messed up my windows. I, I but I, I feel like this was meant to happen. Ryan wants to know what it is. So I'll tell you again. It's this Pecos Bill, told by Robin Williams. It's Pecos Bill. <laughs> Jim just saying my shit list. My lips are sealed. Pecos Bill, I remember learning about it as a kid, like some some mythical, the clock change. You know, I wonder. It's possible. I doubt it, but you never know. Maybe the clock change did cat did cause it. Who knows? But I feel like this is probably a good place to stop and never play Pecos Bill ever again. And probably a good time to stop streaming. Even that it, apparently it's it's about three a.m. over here. Hopster Key, um, that is <laughs> this was on the CDI and then it was moved to, converted to Windows. So this ha this error is a Windows error. Jim says, in all honesty, it probably was the time change. It probably it probably was. I mean, it's it's. That's so odd. I didn't even know that the clock was changing tonight. I would not have even realized it. If Jim didn't mention it, I would have just been like, after we ended the stream, like, what happened? How did I, long did I stream for? What, what the hell's going on? And actually, it's funny. Was this, has this been a... Th yeah, it's been almost three hours anyway. It's like, sort of almost four hours, depending on how you look at it. We have pleasure to pay ghost bill with all of you. What does that mean? Y2K. All right, guys. I think that's it for tonight. I'm going to stream again tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to continue the game Fade that we've been playing, the adventure game. It's been fun. But for now, you guys have been awesome. Make sure you like. If you're watching this after the fact, subscribe, leave a comment. But thank you to Ryan, who says Pecos Bill Jersey Stew. Thank you to Stars Manny. Thanks to Always Asleep. Thanks to Jim Leonard. Thanks to Hopster Key. And thank you to the folks who were here before who, who had to, to drop off, including Ninja, Palpuck, El Jefe, uh, Sifa, Anatoly from Das Nostalgia, and uh, I feel like there's one more person. Shiva Thong, I forgot. Duncan Nation. It's been a whole group, cool group of good people today. So thanks, everybody. We'll do this again soon. You guys are wonderful and beautiful, and you guys are absolute legends. And I'll talk to you all soon. Have a great night, everybody. Peace out.